know, this feels really, really strange, actually. Um, I've done Amdram uh, for quite a few years I in my youth, um, but this is the first time I've actually been on stage, you know, as myself, uh, with no sort of non-speaking extra to hide behind. <laughs> um, and it puts you in a really, really vulnerable place. Uh, I spent my school years in a really, really rough school. Uh, no surprise there. And you create a wall around yourself, this wall that sort of protects you from everything. Um, didn't really help that my mum weren't there as well. That was an added bonus. Um, and it just really made my school life really, really challenging. Uh, she ran the IT department. Uh, and in the 1980s, that meant three algebraic calculators and a ZX81. <laughs> now, the combined brain capacity of those uh, digital implements was actually about a traffic light. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and I'm talking about the computers, not my mum. She wasn't like someone who was going to be assigned. Now, I remember um, during the ritualistic bullying, uh, my mum would actually say to me, uh, whatever the circumstances, I don't want you to use bad language, okay? Um, and with support like that, I mean, who needed the violence squad? Let's face it. <laughs> uh, um, and I think, I think uh, I sort of came out at, at quite an early age. Well, I didn't come out. Everyone sort of, you know, just realised that. I mean, as soon as I came back, you, you, <laughs> this, this is a big surprise. <laughs> a big surprise. Um, Everyone seemed to know about my sexuality before I did. And in fact, someone was actually kind enough to write the words gay lord in the fur of my school at Parker. <laughs> and I'm not sure the choice of school bag out either. Uh, a giant plastic briefcase with Wonder Woman stickers on it. <laughs> uh, actually, my parents were, they were really quite, you know, they were really quite supportive about my sexuality. Um, I think they sort of knew uh, my first fancy dress costume was Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and I'd gone on and on and on for years about, mm, can I have tap lessons? So, <laughs> 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 it was a really, really no big secret uh, at all. <laughs> now, I've really, I've really been lucky about coming out, but I did have one element of conflict. Uh, and that was actually my sister. So, uh, at the age of 15, my sister discovered Jesus. Uh, well, actually, more to the point, she just, uh, discovered a boy who discovered Jesus. <laughs> uh, so that was a more accurate description. Now, uh, she clearly thought that she'd find absolution by sneaking off during News at 10 and jamming her hands down the front of his trousers. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if it's the Lord's work, but uh, yeah, I think he saw heaven a couple of times. <laughs> now, um, the only, the only person that really drew all the straw, straw there was actually my mum, because she had to repeatedly put my sister's duvet on a really hot boil wash. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> fast forward to my early 20s, and my sister's sort of in the height of her religious leanings. Um, so she comes to me, she calls me at mum and dad's, and she says, um, so the Bible says that homosexuality is wrong. So... And I'm conflicted about that. So I felt compelled to point out that actually she'd known me a lot longer than she'd known Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so could we just let this one drop? <laughs> I also reminded her about the time that uh, she'd been a lesbian for a couple of weeks. <laughs> uh, she'd go through a weird phase, found someone out the back of the newspaper and thought, why not? <laughs> So, and there was no swipe right in those days. You literally went through the back of the newspaper with a highlighter, hoping not to find a serial killer. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I digressed from my school days. That's the point I was trying to make. Um, and it had, did leave an indelible mark on me. And that wasn't just the word Gaylord in my fur <laughs> of my school parking. <laughs> so, uh, the mark they left on me was actually anxiety and OCD, which is obviously quite a big thing. Now, I didn't fall out with the OCD side of things. I've never left the house without my keys, and I've left, never left the iron turned on, face down, on a polyester sweater. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the 80s. <laughs> um, so, anxiety, though, is something else entirely. Uh, and I, I always associate anxiety with being in a permanent job interview. You've got a panel of critics pointing out all your flaws, 
and weaknesses in glorious Technicolor. I can hear the voices now. We don't think you've qualified as a functional human being. Come back and see us in a couple of years. <laughs> so, um, anxiety can affect every aspect of your life. I mean, even doing simple things like returning a pair of jeans. I mean, I wanted to be skinny fit. I mean, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> you get deep vein from process from just wearing <laughs> So, and I don't know why I ended up in this sort of awkward and frustrated place, because actually as a child I wasn't really awkward and frustrated. Um, when I was about five, my parents announced, we're going to be naturists. <laughs> Exit one relaxed childhood. <laughs> but it is actually the most freeing experience. You, you know, until you do it, you don't know, but it is a very freeing experience. So every weekend we would pile into the car and my parents would say we're off to the club, which is their code word for the matrix uh, complex. Um, imagine the scene. We would be there in a semi-developed piece of forest land, a battered old swimming pool, a tennis court, and um, a row of trees obscuring us from the motor for traffic. <laughs> And there we were, 50 to 60 people in the British sun, tits out, cocks out, <laughs> a stone's throw away from the M5 junction to Western Supermare. <laughs> and my parents had to be quite creative when I was a kid. I mean, they didn't really have much money. So trips out involved a trip to the garden centre to look at hot tubs. And my particular favourite was a trip to the airport. We'd be up there on the balcony with the planes coming and going while we tucked into our meat paste sandwiches and drunk mellow birds from the films. <laughs> no international travel actually took place, but we loved the thrill of the jet wash on our meat paste soaked faces. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, my childhood summed up. Naked trips to the airport with my parents, my sister, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and that's why I'm here. <laughs>